and then we're going to get into the uh, message for the day. All right? Go ahead, John.
tell you that's one of those songs right there that I wonder why we don't think about it, but Brother Mike why we don't think about that more often yeah. how good he's been to us oh, wow. how much he loves us yeah. <clears throat> where he's brought us from oh, what he's done for us yeah, so much. and it doesn't even humble us enough to think about how little we do for him yeah. amen yeah. amen I'm standing back there thinking, man, I can do so much more. Yeah. There's so much more to be done for the Lord. And there's so much more I can give of me, give to the Lord and do for the Lord. Brother Danny, I don't, this, this world's going to hell, y'all. <clears throat> it's going to hell. And uh, I got the, I got the key. I got the key to help them get saved. I got the key, Brother Mike and Fell, that they need. But do I share it? I want to hear my humble cry. So I take that this morning as, Lord, hear my humble cry of, I'm sorry. Oh, that's, that means I apologize, yeah, but it also means, that, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a sorry excuse after all you've done for me. Brother Michael Swope, what I'd do for him. You can say, oh, you're a pastor. Look what you, <laughs> that doesn't matter. I've still got time. I've still got areas in my life. I've still got opportunities, Brother Reggie, to serve. I've not arrived just because I pastor a church. Amen. I've not just, Brother Mike, Brown, you've not just arrived because you teach a Sunday school class. Brother Matt, you have not arrived because you teach a Sunday school class. I mean, well, that's just, Brother Peter, because we teach Sunday school class. Does not, you ladies that teach Sunday school classes, we've not arrived. And I'm going to tell you, this all leads right into the service to this morning. But I've, Brother Tom, there's so much more of Pastor Bo, that I can give to my Savior. And I wonder why this morning, why, why I don't, why I don't give those things. It's always, always the right time to get right with God if you're, something's bothering you, if God's dealing with your heart. It's always right. I'm not saying if you come to the altar this morning that, that you're in sin, but I am saying this morning that all of us this morning need to get right about something. Amen. I could poll the entire congregation this morning as who feels like where they need to be with the Lord. Who is walking with the Lord as Adam and Eve walked prior to the fall? Well, since none of us, then we're all okay then we're all okay. Then no need for anybody to get right, right? No. <clears throat> nobody in this place dictates my, dictates my walk with God just as much as nobody in this place dictates your walk with God. Let's have heads bowed and eyes closed for just a moment, if you would. No music. I want to give everybody the opportunity this morning to do business with God. These folks are on the altar this morning and making an altar out of your seat this morning. This isn't a time to be praying for somebody else. Go ahead. This is the time to be searching our own hearts. So many times we get in the routine, your pastor included, in the routine of it's Sunday morning, let's go to church. It's Sunday night, let's go to church. It's Wednesday, let's go to church. (laughs) 
sitting here right now thinking about those faces I got to preach to yesterday that aren't in church today. I have no desire to go to church today. And yet God saved the crowd that's sitting here this morning. Gave us the Holy Spirit of God within us. And we end up getting so cold and so indifferent. Should be the happiest people in the world. But can I just be honest with us this morning? We tend to be some of the whiniest. I'm talking to us. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to us, me included. He's been good to us, church. Yeah. How can we help but enter into His presence but with thanksgiving? Oh, I know why. We don't. And it's us. It's not Him. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. But it's me, oh Lord. That wretched man in which I am. I'm the reason I can't enter into His presence with thanksgiving this morning. I'm the reason that I can't hear Him speak to me. I appreciate those songs this morning. But mostly I appreciate what the Lord's doing right now. If this is boring to you and mundane for you, then I'm sorry. I'm not apologizing for this, but I'm sorry for you. See, when God moves... We have to learn to be quiet. Be still. It just gets to be uncomfortable, Brother Matt, because we're used to loud. We're used to living in this world, this noise all the time. When it starts getting quiet, it starts getting uncomfortable. That's good. That's when God pushes us out of measure. <clears throat> Father, I'm thankful for you this morning. More thankful for your presence. Lord, thank you for dealing with hearts this morning, mine included. Lord, that we're not where we need to be with you. Lord, we ought to be able to rejoice and be glad in this beautiful day that you've given us. And Lord, we many times walk around dragging our leg behind us in a negative outlook on the way life is. Father, I'm thankful this morning that you hear our humble cry. And Lord, as I sat in the back back there just a few moments ago and got right with you on some things, I pray that be done in the service this morning. Lord, we can't truly worship you the way you ask us to worship you with any kind of iniquity within our hearts. And Lord, I pray, God, that you'll just forgive us of our childishness as a whole. Lord, as our crybaby type attitudes, Lord, when things don't go our way. Lord, you've been so good to us. And Lord, I just want to be able to rejoice in what you've done. And Father for what you're going to do. 
Lord, I'm looking forward to the end of this service where you save someone. I'm looking forward to you dealing with that heart even now as this quiet time is happening. Father, at the end of this service, Lord, someone will come to know you as their Savior. The Lord will, will plant the seed. And Father, we know it's up to you to give the increase. Now, Lord, be with us as we open up your word this morning. And Father, I pray that everything that's said or done will be pleasing unto you. And that, Lord, you'll get the glory for all that happens. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Boy, ain't he been good to us? Amen. Well, I love when the Spirit gets around like that right there. And here, here's, here's the key to that, Brother Swope. He's doing business with him. Brother Mike Brown, there's times that it gets like that. We start getting uncomfortable. And we start letting our mind go to anything and everything else. When what we really need to do is just knock her out of gear for a minute. And let God speak to our hearts. And uh, I promise you this morning, if you've come prepared, that didn't scare you none. That didn't bother you any. As a matter of fact, you used it as a time to get things settled so that we can worship. Amen. I'm thankful this morning for all that the Lord's allowed us to do and all that He uh, gives us the opportunity for here at Hope. And I never want to take that lightly. Never want to take it lightly. Too often times we get to a point to where we just get in the rig and roll of just going day in, day out, the same old mumbo jumbo. Well, this is what we do. This is what we do. This is what we do. Well, Mike, a lot of times that can get to the point to where we just get humdrum on life and serving God. Serving God's exciting. Anybody that was here yesterday knows how exciting it is to see those kids' faces. See those adults? I got to preach to people yesterday that I don't think had ever heard a gospel message. I did. I got to preach to some adults yesterday, and I can see them in my mind now as to where they were sitting throughout this congregation. And I pray that God does something in their heart. Because we're going to talk about that a little bit this morning. Mark chapter number 4. Mark chapter number 4. God's pressing on your heart this morning. By all means, feel free. Feel free to testify. Feel free to praise Him. Don't want you to sit there and think, well, we're turning to the Bible now. I'm out of it. No, I'm giving you an opportunity. I'm giving you an opportunity this morning before we dig into the Word of God just to be, just to thank the Lord for saving you. Thank the Lord for Correction. Ooh, do we really thank him for correction? Oh, absolutely. I'm thankful this morning for correction because I'll be honest with you. Without correction, I wouldn't be standing where I am this morning. Amen. Without correction, I wouldn't be able to get up here and preach this message this morning. Amen. I'm thankful for his love. Amen. Mark chapter number four and verse number 26. When you find your place, let's go ahead and stand together. Oh, can and will. Mark chapter number four and verse number 26. Mark chapter number 4, verse number 26. We'll read four verses of Scripture, and we'll jump into the thought for this morning. The Bible says in Mark 4, verse 26, And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. And when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. You can be seated this morning. This morning we read a parable here in the book of Mark. This parable is only found here in this particular book of the Bible. Uh, the parable is one of three, uh, uh, is one of three in the Gospels that uses an illustration of a sower. And some believe this parable is an addition to what's found earlier in chapter number four of the book of Mark, where we see the parable of the sower and the, uh, the, the different souls 
that uh, the, the Bible speaks of. This could be God's answer to what happened when the seed fell on good soil, right? This could be God's answer to what he was talking about earlier in this chapter. Um, I, I don't know that for certain, but you know, you can definitely see a parallel there. So I'm not telling you emphatically that that's what this is, but it does kind of go along with the story. So I want to take the time today and look at this parable and preach on this thought. We'll preach on this thought right here. Reaping the rewards. Reaping the rewards. There are rewards for those that will serve God. Would you agree with that? If you read your Bible much at all, you know that there are rewards. Now, Brother Matt, I don't serve God this morning to get those rewards. That is just a perk of serving the Lord. I serve God because He saved my soul from hell. Amen. He forgave me of my sin, of which there were many, and He forgave me of those, and I could not praise Him more for what He's done. Amen. That's why I serve God. That's why I give all of me to God. That's why God should have all of me, as we just talked about this morning. Right? There's no way that I can say, God saved me, forgave me of my sin, and, 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 and when I die, I'll be face to face with the Lord. I'll get to spend eternity in heaven. You ought to come and be part of that as well. There's no way that I could do that without what He did at Calvary. Amen. I'm thankful this morning for Calvary. Thankful this morning for what he's done. As a society this morning, would you agree with me that we are reward driven? We're a reward driven society. Of course we are. Why do you go to that job tomorrow morning that you hate? Paycheck. Amen. That's why we go. Amen. Hey, listen, if we didn't have to go to that job in the morning, if we didn't need money, we would go do something else. I'd go fishing. Matter of fact, I will. But not the kind of fishing I want to do tomorrow, right? <laughs> Amen. Why do we go? And I don't hate my job. Y'all don't get me wrong. But I'm telling you this morning, understand this. We're reward driven. How many of you have ever had a job you just absolutely hated? I believe we all can raise our hand. Amen. I believe we all can raise our hand. Why did you keep going back? Because you're reward driven. You knew at the end of the week, as much as you despised it, as much as you hated the people that went there, as much as all this and that, and the, the people, they talked to you like a dog, they treated you like something they stepped in, but we went back because at the end of the week, Brother Mike Brown, what happened? You got that paycheck. We're reward-driven. We teach our kids to be reward-driven right from birth, right? All right, let me put it this way. I've got dogs. They're reward-driven. They know in the morning. When I get up, they know about 4.30 that my bedroom door is going to open. And I'm going to come downstairs. And they know it's time to get at the back door. Why? They got to go out. They go outside. They handle their business as dogs do. They come back in. You know what they do? They don't go, they don't go back to their crates. They don't go back to the room. They don't go do that stuff. They go to where the treats are. And there ain't no more see it. <laughs> Give me howdy. Now they're already sitting doing this mess whenever I start walking over to them. Because they know what's coming. They're reward driven. They understand that. Listen, if a dog can be reward driven, so can we. Yeah. And we are. Right. Let me ask this question before we get into the message. We'll pray and we'll preach. Why does that not translate into the Christian life? You know why, Brother Mike? Because we don't get a check at the end of the week. We don't get a treat when we come in and sit down beside the stove at, after we've done our business. We've got to lay those treasures up in heaven. Right? They're in heaven waiting for us. Brother Tom, if we can't hold them right now, we don't want to work for them. You know what that proves to me? How can we say we got enough faith that He can save us and give us eternity, but we ain't got enough faith that He'll lay our treasures up for us? That they'll be waiting for us. Right? Anybody Anybody get um, from yesterday, Any anybody get a $100 bill slid in your hand? If you did, y'all better tell me. <laughs> Put it in the box back there. I don't want it. 
But nobody got nobody got rewarded yesterday for that, did they? Any anybody? Might have got an attaboy or a thank you. I had a couple of young boys come up to me yesterday and walked up here and said, Pastor Bo, thank you for inviting us. That's all I need. That's all I need. Out of all the kids that was here, I had those two little boys. I don't even know who they were. I, I, I know their names now. But I had no idea who they were. But they come up and they said, Pastor Bo, thank you for inviting us. Man, no problem. Shook my hand like a young man. Then another boy did that. And they said, thank you. See, my reward for everything that happened is laid in heaven this morning. See, there are going to be folks from what is done that will walk back in here one day. Can I say this too? What if they never do? Increase it and up to me. Paul plant Apollo water. God gives the increase. What's going to happen, Brother Mike Brown? We'll talk about this more. When one of those kids gets born again, what if it don't happen here? I don't have to reap the harvest. I plant it. We plant it. See, just as much as I stood and preached yesterday and gave the gospel, the reward's still yours as well for putting forth the time, putting forth the effort, putting forth the reward. We can reap the rewards. We are reward driven. We understand that. But as I said a moment ago, as we'll preach, why don't that translate into our walk with God? We all work for reward. We all clean up around. I, I clean up around the house for reward. I do. I put my socks where they belong. So Miss Nicole kissed me on the jaw. Because she has to keep stepping over all my clothes in the middle of the floor. I ain't getting no jaw sugar. Right? I fold clothes. Mainly so I don't have to do it again. <laughs> Wash dishes. Yeah, all this stuff I do. I don't do none of it. You know why? She's told me not to. But why don't I do it anymore? Because it upsets her when I do do it. <laughs> you didn't do it right, right? Okay, so I'll, I don't. But we can, get, we can reap rewards. But it's going to take effort. It's going to take effort. So let's look here at this parable this morning. And maybe the Lord will deal with our hearts and help us to uh, draw closer to Him through this. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love You. Lord, thank You, God, for Your many blessings in our lives. Lord, thank You, God, for showing up this morning in a mighty way. And Lord, I pray, God, that You'll deal with the hearts of Your people in the stillness of this time. And that, Lord, as we look into this message, Lord, that we can reap those rewards, Lord. The, the, the opportunity is there. And Father, it's just about serving You. And Lord, uh, I want to serve you to the best of my ability. And Lord, give you all of me. And Father, I pray that Lord, when I start tapering off from that, when any of us start tapering off from that, the Lord, that you'll put us back in check. And Lord, put us where we need to be, that we can serve you to the greatest of our ability. Now, Father, I love you. I thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Many of us here in this place plant a garden, do we not? We got anybody plants gardens? Of course we do. Many of us in here plant gardens. Y'all with me? Everybody looking? Okay. All right. Y'all look like you're staring through me. I just want to make sure I was here. All right. Many of us plant gardens. Why do we plant gardens? Brother Mike, why do you plant a garden? You want fruit from it, right? You want something to come from that. You don't just plant a garden to let it die. Right? You plant a garden so that you can reap the rewards of that garden. There isn't a one of us here that has ever planted a garden and then the next morning walked out to a full bush. Anybody? Anybody ever planted a garden and walked out to it? You don't, right? The seed has to have time to germinate. It has to have time to take root. It has to have time to be watered. And all these things have to be done. It takes effort. It takes time. Same goes in Christianity. It takes people willing to place a seed, willing to talk to somebody, willing to invite them to something, willing to take five minutes. I heard a man say this. 
today. We can trust God that, uh, that He'll save our soul. We can do all that. And we expect the pastor to go in and, and study and study and study for hours and hours and hours to come up and feed our soul from the Word of God. But we can't take five minutes out of our week to invite somebody to come to our church. Amen. When I read that, I said, ooh, that stings a little bit. Because we expect, we expect, we expect, we expect. And we're coming in, sitting down, saying, feed me, feed me, feed me. When we've not even spent time alone with God. We walk into service and we're not even ready to come to church. We're just here because this is what we got to do. So he won't start quoting Hebrews 10.25. So we just got to do it. Right? I'm telling you this morning, we are spoiled, rotten children. We sit here every weekend, week out, and expect God to give us something. Expect God to grow our church. Expect God to grow our, our knowledge of Him. And we won't put in the effort to do a thing, Brother Tom. It's, it's a sad life in which we're living in as Christians. But you're not going to reap any rewards if you don't plant anything. Let's look with me in verse number 26 this morning. I want you to see the planting. The planting that takes place in Mark 4.26 And he said, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Here in this verse, we'll bring out a few things concerning this planting. This planting here is planting a seed into the ground. Mother Mike Brown, it's important that whenever you are planting a garden, which you do every year, and it's Looks fantastic. But how well would you do if you put your seed on top of the ground? It's all going to get gone. How well would you do if you left that seed in the packet sitting on the back porch? Probably not real well. you got a better chance of just putting it on top of the ground, right? You're not going to get anything until, Brother Matt, the Scripture says planting the seed in the ground. You plant a beautiful garden every year as well. But you're not going to get anything until that's, that goes into the soil. So as we look here this morning at this first point of planting, in order to reap those rewards, it takes work, does it not? It takes work. Brother Mike, you spend time, hours on end taking care of that garden, right? Hours on end, Brother Matt, taking care of that garden. Why? So you can get a tomato or two. Right? So you can get, so you can get a few cucumbers. So you can get a, a few squash. Get a head of cabbage or something like that, right? That's what we we'll do. But Peter, y'all got, why do, why do you spend time doing that? So you can have something to eat, right? But it doesn't just happen. It takes work. It takes labor. It takes time. Same in serving God. I want to show you a picture of planting here. The picture in planting. Throughout the Bible, we find that Christ is the beginning and growth of the divine kingdom in the hearts of men. Would you agree with that? Just as a seed that is sown in the ground begins to grow, so does the person that when they accept Christ. Now be careful. Be careful. Not everything that said they've accepted Christ has a seed planted and taken root. May have been a seed planted but it may not have taken root. Brother Matt, you ever planted a seed that didn't have sprout? We all have. You think that could be the same way, Miss Candy, in Christianity? That it could have been a seed planted, but it never sprouted? They may have been a good person. See, a lot of times we make up things for, especially family members and friends, we really make up stuff for people that we got to lead to the Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, no, I led them to the Lord. They're okay. Oh, no, pastor led those to the Lord. They're okay. No, they're not. If there's no fruit, it never took root. It's pretty simple, right? Pretty simple to understand. But it's not going to take root if we're not willing to plant. The picture here shows a seed being in the lives, in the lives as the Word of God. Now, notice there, I, I, I told you about the picture in the planting. That picture is, is showing as we preach the Word of God, as we share the Word of God, as we knock doors and give a track out to someone. The, you may not see fruit from it immediately. 
That's why we've talked about that so many times in our visitation meeting. I'm not expecting you to knock on the door, hem somebody up, and win them to the Lord right there. There's got to be a there's got to be a seed that's been planted sometime along the way. It's got to be there. If not, you're not picking fruit. They have to have a knowledge of who they are. They have to have a knowledge of who he is. It's got to be there. They got to have some sort of biblical knowledge of it. We're not just walking up to a door and and, and say a prayer. Listen, I prefer you not. Right? Why, Pastor? You don't want somebody? To, no, I don't want somebody just to pray. That's what the that's what these other churches around here are doing to our children when they go to them at these VBSs. And all. Be real careful where you take your kids. Amen. You can say, oh, you got real passionate. Yeah, I got real passionate about that. Why? Because I love your kids. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to see your kids drift off into hell because brother so-and-so gave me a certificate that said I'm saved or half saved, whatever in the world that is. Yeah. Come on now. Y'all don't die on me now because I'm talking about some of your friends. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you the truth this morning. They go over to these little places and, oh, well, get this crowd over here. Who wants to go to heaven when you die? That's not what salvation is. Who's a wicked sinner and needs to be forgiven? That's me. That's salvation. Heaven's a perk. Heaven's a perk. Amen. I'm getting sick and tired. This is a completely going different direction, but hallelujah, it needs to be said. We'll just let the Lord have hold of it. I'm getting tired, Brother Mike, of these people that all they're worried about is a prayer. How many sitting in here in this place right now, don't raise your hand, this is just for you, have children, grandchildren, nieces or nephews that have prayed a prayer and you have no confidence in their salvation. I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit if I ain't careful. But that's all right. We can do that. You may say, well, Pastor, when somebody makes a profession, aren't they saved? If, if they truly profess Christ, if they truly call out to Him to save them, no deals, right. nothing struck, nothing, well, I'll do this, God, if you do this. No, 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 no. That's not how this thing works. You give yourself fully to Him. Amen. Trust in what He's done at Calvary. You can't do it yourself. Amen. That's salvation. That is salvation. These folks that, Brother Peter, that say they're saved. Oh, I love God. Great, where you go to church? Oh, I don't have to go to church. And you know what? They're right. You don't have to. You should want to. You should want to. Why don't you want to learn about Him? Why don't you want to hear songs like we sang this morning and the kids sang them? Why don't you want to? Oh, those are boring to me. Why? They talk about my Savior. Why are they boring to you? Man, that ought to be exciting to hear about those songs. I ought to be a woo, hallelujah, talking about my Lord. That amazing gracious bores me to death. Why? Take the music away from it. Just listen to the words. Man. Victory in Jesus. Well, I'm sure I'm glad they got a little upbeat music to it because other than that, it'd be boring to death. Man, I got victory in Jesus. I ain't got to worry about death taking this body. It can have it, but my soul is in eternity. Amen. I'm with my Lord. Hallelujah. But there's planning that has to take place in order to see those things. Somebody had to plant in my life. I went to I went to church for probably the first seven, maybe eight years of my life. I went to church. There was seed planted in me there. It wasn't even a Baptist church, y'all. Whoo, calm down now. Don't tell the brethren; they'll think I didn't have the seed planted. <laughs> it was an assembly of God. Woo! That's where I got my shout. I reckon. <laughs> no, I got my shout from the from the Bible. Anyway, but there was a seed planted, brother Matt. My family got out of church, went away from God for several years. 
God just so happened to put a pretty young lady in my life. Didn't know she went to church. Couldn't tell it from her lifestyle. You'd say that about it? Yeah, I said it. Couldn't tell it from her lifestyle, but she told me she went to church. I thought, I can do that. Ain't no problem. I can go to church. I've been to church a lot. I went to church. I helped in vacation Bible schools. I could teach. I could do all these things. I could drive to maximal men's conferences and get an attaboy from the pulpit. Pastor would say, well, Brother Bo drove an hour and a half by himself over there just to be in this meeting, stay in the meeting, and drove back late that night another hour and a half because he had to work. Look at what Brother Bo's done. Brother Bo lost his ball in high weeds. Amen. Done you this morning. Not everything that tells you that they're saved is saved. You say, well, I'm a member of this church. You still ain't fooling me that you're saved. Oh no, did that come out? There are some I got confidence in. And there are others that there's no confidence in. Just as much as you've got no confidence in your children, as much as you've got no confidence in your grandchildren, as much as you've got no confidence in maybe your husband or your wife, so too has your pastor no confidence in some of the members. If I was a member here, I'd believe. Maybe why you're not a member here. I'm not trying to be ugly this morning, y'all. I'm just letting you know. This thing's serious. This thing's serious. If we're not willing to give God all of me, why do we expect it out of somebody else but never us? Amen. There are folks in here that have grown up around church. There are folks in here that have grown up in a pastor's family and have seen the prettiest of the pretty. When I say that, I mean the ugliest of the ugly in church. About their daddy. About their mama. But you know what? They stay at it. Brother Tom, it don't matter what's said about you, my friend. Still a planting that needs to take place. Still planting that has to take place in this world. There's a person in the planting. Listen, the sower here is in this verse is those people who proclaim the word of God. That's you. That's me. That's us. Those that live and speak the truth that you find in this precious Bible. A person is the avenue in which God uses to get the gospel out. He has always used men to plant the seed. And we as a child of God should not only be willing, but we ought to be able to plant that seed. The willingness is shown in our lives and how we live our lives in public and in private. That's the willingness. Remember, we are... What we are when no one else is looking. That's called character. It's called character. See, we can come in here all day long. Brother Peter, I can walk in here this morning in my suit. Tie cinched up real nice. <laughs> Matched up pretty nice. Because Miss Nicole dresses me. Brother Mike, I can come in here looking the part. I could show up yesterday looking the part. I could talk... I could do all the work that was done yesterday looking and acting the part. I could help with a game and look the part. I can talk this morning. Oh, hey, brother, good to see you. I sure do love you. Missed you, my friend. I can talk the part. But the truth is, I am what I am when I'm out there. Amen. If I'm not willing to share the gospel with somebody that I come in contact with. Am I really worth my salt as a Christian? Am I really giving my all? Had somebody tell me this week, and I'll let God <clears throat> let them get the glory from God. I said, Pastor, I just want you to know I got to share the gospel with this person. And I got to share the gospel with this person. 
got to talk to people, got to plant a seed with a couple of people. And no, they didn't get saved. And no, they're not at church this morning. But let me tell you something to that person. God is pleased in what you did. God is very well pleased in what you did. Because Brother Matt, you know the hardest people to talk to about the Lord? Those people that we've known for a long time, especially those that we've known before salvation. Amen. But we've got to have the ability. How are we going to have the ability? We've got to have the willingness, but we've got to have the ability. How are we going to get that ability is knowing Him, learning His Word. Can we just go ahead and get dog honest this morning? Y'all don't mind, do you? You're not going to have the ability if you don't know Him. If you're not saved this morning, you don't know Him. Oh, I know Him. I, I, I know Him. I, I got Him right here. There's never been a root that took place of the seed. I can't tell you intimately, Brother Mike Brown, about somebody that I just know. Somebody I've just heard of. Somebody I've just read of. I can't tell you intimately. But somebody I have a personal relationship with, Miss Robin, I can tell you about. And we as a child of God this morning should be planting. So we'd see the picture of the person, which is us. What kind of seed are we sowing? Think about this. Are we sowing wheats or are we sowing tare? Some of these people out here that I'm talking about, these churches, they're sowing a bunch of tares. And those tares are going to wake up in hell one day and be like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I, I trusted that preacher. Whoa, wait a minute. I trusted that Sunday school teacher. Whoa, whoa wait a minute. I, I got baptized. It's that Matthew seven twenty one crowd. I want you to see the place and we'll finish. Notice the place of the planting. He said in the ground. This I believe the Bible is speaking of men's hearts. You got a thorny heart. You got a hard heart. And seed can't take root on any of those. But that good soil, that good soil that that seed falls on. Rocky, thorny, hard, all that good stuff, you find that in communities. Brother Mike Brown would find it in churches from time to time too. But I go to church, tell your face. Amen. I'm a Christian. Really? Anybody ever met a Christian like that? They were such a Christian, they hated everything. Yeah, I love Jesus. Yeah, He loves me. Why are you asking me? Hey, can I say something? If I ask you when you got saved, if I ask you your testimony, and you get mad, I'm not even going to say check up. I'm just going to tell you you lost. Okay? Plain and simple, you're lost. If I come up, Brother Reggie, and I say, hey man, tell me about when you got saved. Woo, sit down, let me talk to you. Amen. Same with any of you men in here. You know, for most of you men in here, you would say, or you ladies, tell me about when you got saved. You wouldn't have to go, uh, 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 why are you asking me that? I've asked people when they got saved before. Why, you think I'm not saved? That's not what I said. I had a, I had a couple I was talking to the other day. I said, tell me your testimony. They didn't get mad at me. They sat right in here and they told me their testimony. I said, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd never heard it. I have confidence in their salvation, but I'd never heard it before. So I wanted to hear it. Anything wrong with that? You want to know my testimony? Mark you off about half hour and come see me. Amen. It ain't got to be that. I'm just... But it ought not make you mad. Brother Mike, you ever asked anybody what the testimony was? Tell me when you got saved and they get mad at you. Oh, it happens. Especially when you talk to somebody that's living like hell and you tell them, oh, oh well, I'm saved. I'm saved. Well, great. Tell me when you... When did you get saved? Something I like to ask is, how old were you when you got saved? What? Why do you get mad? Y'all not get mad. If you're a child of God, it ought to just be something that rolls off. Why? Because it shows that you got that, that receptive heart. And y'all know how powerful a testimony is? Brother Michael Swope, I've been in services before people get saved. Preacher never preach. 
Testimony, 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 testimony. Why? God did the preaching through His saints that day. And people get born again. That's why it's so important to stand up and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for what He's done in your life. Listen, your testimony this morning, if you suppress that this morning of God wanting you to stand up and praise Him, there could have been somebody in here this morning going through the exact same thing God saved you out of. And they needed to hear it. Miss Suzanne, they could have very well heard it and be like, if God fixed them, He can fix me. Brother Matt, how many times have we hindered the working of the Holy Spirit because we wouldn't give in to what God wanted from us? And so, will God send somebody else by, will He? If He's dealt with them once, there's no guarantee He's got to deal with them again. Dealt with them twice, there's no guarantee He'll deal with them again. You're sitting here this morning and God's dealt with your heart. You, your heart, you, you felt that. You know that I need to get saved. I, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. There's no guarantee that tomorrow He'll deal with you again. I wish I could tell you that there was, but there's not a guarantee of that, guys. But the place has to be good. You know what happens? And I'm finished. i got to finish up. But you know what happens when, when, when we continue putting them off? Continue putting them off. When you got somebody that continues to put you off, put you off, put you off, that person that gets mad whenever you ask them about their salvation, you know what's happening there? That receptive heart, that soft heart that once would say, I know I'm not saved, is now saying, huh. I'm hardening up. I'm becoming rocky. Huh. They might not be all grr in your face, but inside. They stop being receptive. That's why it's important to have things here that we do that we can invite folks to come. Because we don't know how many hearts are receptive out there and not hearing the gospel. We don't know how many people sit in other churches around this community and they're not receptive or, or they're not preaching, so therefore they're not able to receive the proper Word of God. We don't know that. They're, they're there. It's there. I want to receive it. I want to hear the gospel. I want you to preach to me. But you're not. You'll never get saved being told how good you are. Amen. Amen. But isn't that what? Isn't that what you're such a good little fella. Yeah, you cuss God. And yeah, you run around on your wife. Yeah, you steal from everybody that you can. But you know what? God knows we're all going to mess up. No, you wicked as the devil. Amen. From the youngest to the oldest, these sweet little girls sitting on the front row. Amen. They got a wickedness within them. Amen. All of them do. And I know, how dare you talk about my precious baby like that? You ought to be the one who knows the best. <laughs> Amen. We got to plant the seed, Brother Matt. How are we going to plant? We're the people he's put in place to do that. We've got to be the ones to do it. It takes work. It takes effort. It takes time away from me. Amen. See, my family understands that. That's something that we settled a long time ago. But you know what? With Michael Swope, they go with me most of the time. Most of the time I go minister, they go with or she, Mama goes with me anyway. But we like to minister as a family. You know who I feel real sorry for, Brother Mike Brown? Those people whose spouse won't minister with them. I, I, know, I know people like that. Matter of fact, I've got some real good friends of mine whose wives will not go out. Will not go with them. Will not help them knock doors will not help them evangelize their community, just will not do it. Their hands are tied. They have to get another guy from the church to go help them. Let me say this to you. If you need that, I'm here. I'll go with you. I'll go. If you have a desire to go knock on doors, 
And mama or daddy, either one. If husband won't go, Miss Nicole will go with you. If your wife won't go, I'll go with you. Amen. Why? Because God has put people to plant. And there's places out here that need to hear the gospel. The place being the ground, that soft, good soil, needs to be planted. Any of you, I'm, I've got to finish, but any of you that plant gardens ever look at a dark soil and see that dark soil on top and you're like, man, I'm going to get tomatoes this big this year, right? You ever get excited, Brother Mike? I know you do. Don't sit there and act like you don't get excited. Brother Mike starts getting his garden ready, getting everything. Brother Matt starts spending hours and getting everything ready and getting excited. And, and, and man, Brother Peter, you're sitting there and you're looking at that soil and you're like, boy, I can't. It ain't going to be long, Brother Swope Boy. And this, thing, this thing's going to be plumb covered in greenery. I'm going to be able to pick tomatoes. I'm going to be able to pick onions. I'm going to be able to pick all this stuff. Get excited about it. Why don't we as a Christian look out in the fields of white already to harvest? We as a Christian ought to look out in this community and say, man, the soil is ripe for the picking, ripe for the planting. And we'll talk this afternoon about the picking. It's about eyes closed.